Alright YouTube, David Harry here and in this video I'm going to show you what I can only describe as blazing fast H.265 encoding by DaVinci Resolve on the M1 Max MacBook Pro which is the 32GB 32 GPU core 1TB version. Now in this video I'm just strictly dealing with speed tests so this has got nothing to do with quality however quality is absolutely fantastic as well given the right bit rates and such so this is just going to be a transcode exercise for speed also the clips that I'm using do not have any effects on them so what I'm doing here is basically treating resolve as if it were a transcoder program which I would do anyway so regardless of what the source is or where it was edited on whether it was on resolve or something else in this instance I would now start using resolve as a transcoder so anyway let me just show you a couple of things here before I kick into it so as you can see here the version of resolve that I'm on is 17.4 one which is the latest version as of the day that I'm doing this particular test now the three clips that I'm going to be testing in the timeline are all one minute long the first one is 1080p HD second one is 4k UHD third one is 8k UHD now if we have a look in the inspector here in the file properties as we can see on the first file which is 1080p that is Apple ProRes 4444XQ 59.94 frames per second now moving on to the second clip which is 4K UHD, this too is also Apple ProRes 4444XQ 59.94, once again being confirmed that it's 3840 by 2160 And then for the third clip in the timeline, that too is Apple ProRes 4444XQ 59.94, and also that is being confirmed as being 7680 by 4320 Now just to be clear, the 4K and the 8K variants that I'm using here, although they are 4K and 8K, K files they were actually sourced from a 1080 file so just for convenience I've used one file pre-transcoded them to the Apple ProRes 444XQ at the three variant resolutions that I'll be trying within this test okay so onto the encoding and what I will do first of all is show you the main encoder parameters that I'll be using here I won't be deep diving all over the encoder I will just go for the overview of the encoder here so what we're going to be doing is going to mp4 as the container also H.265 as the codec because this is the H.265 encoder test. Also I'm going to be using use hardware acceleration if available because this will take advantage of the new hardware encoding facilities within inside these Macs. Now if I come down here, obviously resolution and frame rate is set for whatever the timeline is which is at the moment 1080p 5994. Now as far as quality is concerned, I've got the bitrate set to automatic. Just quickly on that point, from what I've seen so far it doesn't matter what the bitrate is it does not impact encoding time now don't forget this particular test is a speed test so whilst a low bitrate will definitely give you a lower picture quality as it were I'm not concerned about that right now because this is not a picture quality test however this will actually encode amazing looking picture quality if you start increasing the bitrate appropriately on top of that as well, I have no concern right now for file size because it is not a file size test. It is purely a speed test, just to be clear about that. Also, I'm selecting here main 10. Now, the reason for that is, is because the source footage here is all 10-bit. And wherever possible, if I've used 10-bit sources, I will encode out to 10-bit as well to maintain the bit depth. Now, that's regardless of wherever these files end up going. So even to YouTube, I would upload the 10-bit file because all of my outputs would always be the same bit depth as the input. There are other parameters here, but like I say, we don't really need to go into them. This is not a tutorial on how to encode it is just showing you the basics of how fast the encoder is so on to the first encode then and as we can see here i have got the 1080p hd version io on the timeline so that's what i'll be exporting also just for like you know for ease of use for me after i've done the test i'm going to call this hd to hd so i know what it is and i've just pre-allocated the folder for these things to go into as well on the desktop so what i'm going to do here is add to queue now let me just go here and click render all now look at this number up here right hold on 406 oh, that is just mental look at it <laughs> right that's the encode done that's one minute of h265 done 
<laughs> That's insane. I, I don't even know what that was. It was about 400 frames per second it was encoding. And so to the second of the 1080p outputs in here, I will be using the 4K UHD as the source for the output. So as you can see, I've just highlighted that or IO'd it in the timeline. Now it might also be worth mentioning here the type of scaling options that I've selected. So this is just the standard sharper option that I've got selected here. Now whatever goes on from here on in, that is the same for everything that I do. So there's gonna be no special type of scaling options selected here or anything like that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is call this one UHD to HD. Let me just clear that last one there. Let me just add the encoder queue and let me just hit render. Okay, let's see what this does. <laughs> 354, 355. I'm gonna be safe on saying 356 frames per second. That is just absolutely insane. And now to the third of the 1080p exports, and this is going to be selecting the 8K UHD as the source. So obviously downscaling here, just as it did do with the 4K UHD to go out to 1080p HD. Once again, just quickly, you can see nothing has changed within the encoding parameters here. Now, let me just clear that queue again. And as we can see up here, I've just titled this 8K UHD to HD. Actually, this name and structure doesn't really matter for you. It's just for me for after the test and so I can analyze some extra stuff. Now, check this out. Render all. Don't forget, this is 8K UHD, 59.94 frames per second, being downscaled to 1080p, 5994, and then exported out as H.265. Oh, my. <laughs> right, okay. 130. I think we're gonna be safe here. I'm gonna call that 129 frames per second just to be mega safe. It's creeped up to 131 there. Yeah, that is just bizarre. Now, just to reiterate once again here, this is 8K UHD being downscaled to 1080p, and it's going out at 130 frames per second, which is absolutely insane. And now to the second set of encodes, and this time I shall be encoding out to UHD or 4K UHD. Now, just quickly, let me just show you the setup parameters here. So as you can see, the project is now changed to 4K UHD, and everything else is as is image scaling and such. Like I said, I don't need to show the image scaling again after this point, it's just gonna remain the same. Once again, all the parameters for the exporter are as is and exactly the same. And this time round, the first clip is going to be 1080p once again. So don't forget this time, 1080p being upscaled to UHD. Let me just clear that list there. And as we can see there, I've given it a file name, HD to UHD. So let me just add that to the queue and let's go for a render, okay? So don't forget, this is now an upscale. <laughs> and this is over 140 frames per second. <laughs> okay, yeah, that is quite bizarre. I, I would have thought that at some point here, I would have to have sped through some of this encoding because it would have slowed down too much. But however, I'm gonna be able to talk through this probably, <laughs> which will be annoying for you, but it's gonna be good for me. 140 odd frames per second. Now that is just absolutely off the hook. Okay, so what I've done now, I have selected the 4K UHD clip within the timeline here. I've given a title UHD to UHD. Everything else is once again exactly the same as far as the codec parameters are concerned. Let me add this to the queue. Now here as well, what's worth noting, we are just going one-to-one -one as far as the resolution and the frame rate. Obviously the frame rate is one-to-one -one all the time with these encodes right now, but here we've got the resolution matching one-to-one. -one. So let's see what goes on here. So there is gonna be no scaling going on whatsoever. So let's try this now. Wow, okay. Once again, I'm gonna call that at 140. I'm gonna err on the side of course. I mean, 144 frames per second, 155, 100, oh, wow, okay. Right, I, I, I'm just constantly being absolutely blown away by what's going on here as far as these encoding, like, you know, numbers are concerned. <laughs> anyway, to the next one. Okay, so to the third of the 4K UHD outputs here, and I've obviously got the third clip in the timeline selected here, which is the 8K UHD file. So obviously what's going on here, once again, is some more downscaling. So this is 8K UHD going down to 4K UHD. 
I've given it a bit of a meaningful title, something that I can understand later. Once again, all the parameters are the same and identical as they have been through the encoder test. Let me add this to the queue and let's see what's going on here. Okay. Let's see, 95, wow, 103, wow. Okay, so over 100 frames per second. <laughs> right, you have to remember here that this is this is like quite close to like twice real time. Twice real time for this timeline is going to be just a sh you know shade under 120 frames, as it were. This is on 103 right now, so you know well over real time. Let's put it that way, but like close enough to for it to be almost twice as fast as real time. That is just absolutely bananas. I just don't understand how, how this is doing this and what is going on. It's freaking me out. Okay, so with the third of the 4K UHD outputs done, I am now over to the 8K UHD outputs. So let me just quickly show you here that the timeline has changed. So timeline resolution is 8K UHD. Let's come out of there. I have got the HD clip selected in the timeline. I've given it a meaningful title, HD to 8K UHD. All the encode parameters are as is, as they have been through the actual encode test prior to this. And what I will do is add that to the queue and let me go for a render on this. So what's happening here then? We are upscaling 1080p to 8K UHD. And wow, look at that. 40, 40 odd frames per second, right? So that's dipping down to 40 and about 42 and stuff. That is absolutely immense. Now, you might be looking at that now and thinking, well, those numbers have dropped loads, haven't they? You have to appreciate this is 8K UHD output that we're doing here, and there's some scaling going on and stuff like that. That number there is mega, mega fast as far as I'm concerned. I'm used to doing tons and tons of encoding and stuff like that, and I use other NLEs, and I'm telling you right now, there is nothing on Windows that can touch this. I mean, I don't know if Resolve will actually do this on Windows with any of the encoders that it can use, like NVENC or anything like that. I don't know if it uses QuickSync, but QuickSync and NVENC on Windows don't do this at 8K UHD on anything that I've used. Anyway, yeah, um, let's see. I think we know that that's going to sustain that right the way through. So let me just fast forward to the end where we get to the end of this encode. Hold on. Okay, so at the end of that then, I'm going to say that that averaged out at 43 frames per second. So that was 1080p HD being upscaled to an 8K output. And that now takes me on to the second of the 8K UHD outputs. And so obviously that is going to be the 4K UHD source in the timeline. Once again, meaningful name and all the rest of it. Nothing has changed as far as the base parameters are concerned for the encode. So let me just add that to the queue and let me start that rendering. Okay, so that last one I reckoned was averaging, say, 43 frames per... Oh, wow, what was that? 50, 44, 40... <laughs> that's mad. Okay, that looks like that's evening out at around 43, maybe. Do you know what? What I've noticed here so far is, um, regardless of, like, the resolution of the source file... It's not a million miles away as far as the actual output, like encode speed is concerned, because that is banging around 43 is the average there. And like that's basically what the 1080p source was doing when that was going out to 8K. Um, I mean, obviously, these things will change, you know, if you start adding filters and you've got like a full blown edit on the go with all kinds of stuff going on, dissolves and cuts and weird, like different like codecs and things like that. However, this is just designed to give you a basic idea of exactly what's going on as far as the encoder being hit as a raw encoder. And as you can see here, that is just insanely impressive. But like I say, there does seem to be some consistency regardless of the resolution of the input as to what the output is going to be. Okay, I might as well just leave this through to the end here because that's basically done it. Look at that. I, again, I would say that that is averaged out to have been about 43 frames per second. Once again, that was 4K UHD being upscaled to 8K UHD at 43 frames per second. All right, so to the third and final part of the 8K UHD testing, which is also the last encode for the entire video test here. And obviously, this is going to be the source of 8K UHD going to an 8K UHD destination. 
Once again, I've given it a meaningful title up here. And again, the parameters are all as is. Let me just add this to the render queue and let me get into that. Okay, so let's see what this does. And it is 50, <laughs> 57, 40, 52, 52, 1,600. I'm getting all confused with the numbers. Right, this I think is going to average out at about 43 thereabouts. Right, I think what I've worked out here is the consistency that we're seeing within the encoder is I think because what's happening ahead of the encoder, like doing its job, like that YUV buffer or RGB buffer, whichever one it is that's feeding it, that is already in real time. So that's the reason why I don't think the various scaling options are mattering here. Because if I were to look at this stuff in the timeline, it would all play real time. Now, because the timeline is real time, that means that anything from that being fed to the encoding engines are gonna be like, you know, hit at the maximum that the encoding engines can do, which is the reason why we're seeing that very like consistent output on like any particular resolution regardless of what the input is as long as the input was being in, in real time on like you know the timeline which these are i've not shown you that but believe me these are real time on the on the timeline it is amazing that's for another video so is my doing some pro res export testing so we're just coming up to the end of this one and let's see yeah, it's going to be the same. They're about 43 frames per second. Absolute madness. Okay, then. So that will conclude it for this video. I may have a little bit more information in the description to the video and stuff. So have a look at that as well anyway, just to refresh yourself over some of these numbers here. It's not worth me sitting here and analyzing to the numbers that we've just gone through. The video has been long enough. And I think people will have seen from this everything that they need to see in order to be able to work out as to whether or not resolve as a good option as a transcoder on its own which it absolutely is anyways if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up also if you're interested in this stuff to do with resolve and the m1 max and stuff definitely subscribe to my channel and get all over that bell notification icon button while you're at it because i will be doing a lot with the m1 max and also resolve in fact probably more so with resolve because at the moment I'm trying to migrate from my current NLE on the Windows platform over to Mac and I will be using Resolve as my main NLE. So as I go through this journey of learning Resolve and learning more about it, I'll start doing a lot more videos about it anyways. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.